God loves movies. He created them. Movies are visually dramatic stories. Cinema is a beautiful and powerful art that communicates doctrine and truth through storytelling. With so many topics, themes, worldviews, ideas, how do Christian artists engage cinema while giving the glory back to God? This video essay will explore the three biblical standards on how art glorifies God and will analyze how Christian artists can use it to engage cinema. In the book, Art for God's Sake, by Philip Graham Riken, he argues that there are three biblical standards Christian artists must follow. They are not relative, they are absolutes. First is goodness. Goodness is both an ethical and aesthetic standard, art that is excellent, art that demonstrated through mastery of technique in a particular artistic discipline. Goodness has two fundamentals, ethical and aesthetic. It should be obvious to Christian artists it is forbidden to create content that is immoral. But the most common issue with filmmaking is the intentions. Too often, the problem is, is that artistry can easily become idolatry. It exists only for its own sake and not for a higher purpose. Some films are easy to spot the selfish intentions, but others are not necessarily clean cut. But above all, Christian artists must use cinema as a tool to worship God, not to glorify oneself. I am God. In aesthetic terms, Christian artists are called to pursue excellent art. We should make it as well as we can, offering God our very best. We should strive to be creative with our art. Creativeness can help express the other two absolutes. truth and beauty. A person who is skilled in the cinematic arts can weave biblical truth and redemptive qualities organically to the storytelling. But as we all know, if we want to artistically understand cinema, we need to start somewhere. And the first couple films that we create might not be so great. Ready, set, charge! <laughs> Nathan, fire that bazooka! But this should not deter us from pursuing the medium. We should strive to understand the craft and pursue excellence, for God has a taste for excellence. Which requires being critical of our artworks. Developing a critical approach helps us reach conclusions and the meaning and value of particular artworks. It can sharpen our judgments and increase our awareness and understanding in both art and life. Criticism applies to all of media, even Christian media, for it can help produce aesthetic films. The Kendrick Brothers Productions is one of the most well-known independent Christian media entertainment production companies. The Kendrick Brothers have created four films since the first film, Flywheel, in 2003, and has made over $152 million total in box office return. With 15 years of filming experience, they should have a clear understanding of the expectations of cinema. But critics have continually panned their films negatively. Even the audience is noticing their lackluster quality. By that, they mean they saw how successful Tyler Perry movies were, and they wanted to make a Tyler Perry ripoff movie. Which raises an interesting question. What is preventing them from creating aesthetic films? Some critics have linked the lack of growth to fit the marketability of Christian melodrama. It's not a step forward for Christian films, it's just more proof that you can make anything for Christians as long as it's extremely on the nose with the things that Christians want to hear. Other critics have linked it to the brothers' misunderstanding of the art of cinema. These men are preachers. They are not filmmakers. They will tell you, I know them, I have worked with them. They will tell you, we are not here to make art. We are not here to make movies. We are here to build up the body and preach the gospel. We use film to do it. But undoubtedly, our culture is demanding more aesthetic films. If Christians want to engage culture, then there needs to be a clear understanding of the inner workings of cinema. For cinema is a complex medium. Light, color, sound, blocking, editing, dialogue, drama, 
tension, suspense, special effects, music, rhythm, and so on, which is why few are called to be filmmakers, for they understand the craft. It's not about one being right and the other being wrong. Bad art happens when we misidentify our calling. The second absolute standard is truth. Truth has always been one important criterion for art. Art communicates truth in various ways. It is an incarnation of the human condition. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Where is truth primarily found in cinema? It is found in the movie's worldview. Movies are first and foremost stories. It communicates doctrine and theology mostly through story. Storytelling draws us into truth by incarnating worldview through narrative. The film's ultimate goal is to convince the audience to accept the worldview the film presents. If a film successfully captures your imagination and convinces you of its world, then you have been impacted by its worldview. Who knew we will be sympathizing with crooks in Ocean's Eleven? Who knew we would accept the ideas of pacifism in Hacksaw Ridge? Who knew that we would love the political incompetence in Dr. Strangelove? Films are powerful vessels to impose truth to our culture. There are a multitude of worldviews, and going through each worldview will be time consuming. So comment below if you want us to create more videos about worldviews. But for this video, we'll be focusing on one worldview that's commonly found in Christian cinema, known as the melodramatic worldview. The melodramatic worldview is characterized by strong emotionalism and excessive expression. It features extreme situations and actions. The world it portrays is black and white. All issues are plain and simple, based on a moral polarization. This worldview portrays simplistic characters and a consequence-free environment to create oversimplified version of life. You never let anything get to you. How do you do that? Jesus. So why is the melodramatic worldview popular? It's because melodrama aligns the audience with the good that always triumphs over evil. It represents the world people want to be and to a certain extent believe that it is. It focuses on the eventual triumph of Christians for all those who love him. It's a very optimistic model for the world. God is good. <laughs> all the time. And all the time. God is good. <laughs> but it's not a very reliable model of the world, for it negates the truth of our present situation of sin. That sin results in complexity. The world isn't clear cut, good and evil, black and white. Our world is broken, and there are moral dilemmas that challenge our ethics. The melodramatic worldview, in contrast, paints the world in stereotypes that makes morals easy to palate. It is easier to have a story that affirms our preconceived notions about the world rather than actually face it in all its complexity. We're going to prove once and for all that God is dead. The largest independent Christian company in the nation is Pure Flix Entertainment. The company has created and produced over 37 films since 2003. They are best known for the God's Not Dead series, the largest independent Christian franchise of all time. In addition, they are also well known for engaging in the melodramatic worldview. It is very evident in their films, especially in the God's Not Dead franchise. Do you think you're smarter than me, Wheaton? Do you think there's any argument you can make that I won't have an answer for? Christianity is the worst virus of all. It slowly creeps into our lives when we're weak or sick or helpless. I will make it my personal mission to destroy any hope of a law degree in your future. Yes, I hate God. All I have for him is hate. We're going to prove once and for all that God is dead. I hate what people like your clients stand for and what they're doing to our society. Okay then. But regardless, worldviews are powerful, and a lack of discernment of what's being indulged can impact a person's faith and mimic to the worldview being presented. If you show these movies to a young child, they're going to grow up thinking that all atheists are the scum of the earth. Trust me, I know. I am proof of it. I grew up watching Christian movies and thought it was my job to disprove every atheist by arguing in YouTube comment sections. Once I realized not every atheist was out to stray me from the faith, 
I felt incredibly stupid and humbled. I recommend reading some of the audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes of some melodramatic Christian films when you have a chance. It's pretty shocking. But regardless, in order to maintain the standard of absolute truth, Christian artists are called to uphold a different worldview, the biblical worldview. The biblical worldview is a lens in which we view the world through scriptures. It holds that there is a God who created the world around us, and he is actively involved in the world. Faith is integral to all of life, and human sin is real, and God offers forgiveness and the possibility of redemption through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. A Christian artist must offer images and stories that can resonate with our lives. Stories can be used to reveal the virtuous characteristics of God. Characters who act honestly in these ways demonstrate ideals, values, and attitudes that are in harmony with the Christian vision. The more honestly an artist engages with the impulse, the truer the art, and the truer the art, the more it can reveal to me the lies that I tell myself. The final standard is beauty. The kind of art that glorifies God is good, true, and finally, beautiful. On a humanistic level, beauty is relative. As the old saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. For example, I love action films. I especially love hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is an aesthetic beauty to action that I enjoy putting in my films. <laughs> However, someone might find action appalling and will find beauty in documentaries about cheese. From pasture to pizza, from Roquefort to Velveeta, no matter how you slice it or spray it, it's one of humankind's most complex and cherished foods. But God's beauty is different and more complex to us because films need to be redemptive. Christian art is redemptive, and this is its highest purpose. A film's beauty is found in the redemptive qualities of a film. Redemptive qualities testify to what we can become. We are always drawn to beauty that endures. The truth of what we were what we are, and what we can become in Christ. A good example is in the movie Schindler's List. A very powerful scene happens when Oscar Schindler breaks down when he finally realizes the sanctity of human life. For this. I could have become one more person, and I didn't. <laughs> In this moment, Schindler is redeemed from his selfish and materialistic ways and finally sees the sanctity of human life. However, to show the redemptive beauty of human life in Oscar's character, from corrupt businessman to sympathizer of Jews, the movie had to show the dark reality of the Holocaust, which is why truth and beauty go together. In order for a character to possibly redeem himself, he needs to understand truth about himself of what needs to be redeemed. And many times, that truth is very ugly. But it's important to be honest with its truth. If we ignore truth's darker side, we are focusing on half-truths. And there is no fuller, more complete lies than half-truths. Portraying beauty requires honesty which explains why the melodramatic worldview is not a reliable model. Christian art tends to have the opposite problem. It tries to show the beauty without admitting the truth about sin, and to that extent is false, dishonest about the tragic implications of our depravity. It simplifies cinema to where it restricts virtue to the domestic realm and limits the idea of Christian calling to personal, family, and church life. Uh, we believe in the power of prayer. We grew up in a praying home. Uh, we've seen God work mightily in our parents' lives. We're in a praying church, and we've seen the Lord work miracles in our church. And every one of the movies, the books, the things that we've been a part of, we know that it's been because of the Lord's grace in response to uh, the prayers of the saints. In other words, the worldview sees Christian films are meant to be simplistic. That is what the Bible, the church, and family is for. It is true that Films should not be a basis for our faith. Daily devotions and regular church attendance are necessary for the growth of the individual. 
However, this ideology raises a theological question. If the point of films is to not artistically express our love for God, not pursue excellence, and not to challenge our culture with biblical truth just to create simplistic films, then why bother making films at all? Fundamentally, it's stating that Christian films are meaningless, which arguably they are, because there's a lack of positive engagement with Christian cinema. Christian movies, they suck. It's as simple as that. I find that there are a lot of factors as to why Christian films tend to be hard to watch. The first and foremost issue is that they tend to have an agenda. Some of the biggest complaints of the Christian genre are that the acting is bad and the production value is terrible. Yeah, the, the movie sucked. It's manipulative, it's offensive, and on top of that, it's poorly written. I don't even believe Christian families should watch these movies. Here's why. What these movies depict is not true at all. I wasn't connected with the character. I just feel like this movie was a lot of missed opportunities. I didn't hate the movie's guts by the end. I'm just saying it wasn't good. I want to see faith-based films do good, but just like bad movies who continue to make money, they're probably not even gonna change. So is the lack of engagement because we are misunderstanding the intentions of the simplistic films? Or is it because these Christian artists are not engaging cinema properly? The reason why these absolute standards are in place because our ultimate calling as Christian artists is to reflect the character of God in cinema. Any deviation is a misrepresentation of God's glory in creation. If Christian artists want to take cinema seriously, then we need to take these standards seriously. If Christians continue to develop an uncritical view of film, we will ultimately forget that film is created by God. For God loves movies, and He has high standards for them. So let's take the medium seriously, embrace its complexity, and be honest with its presentation. This will allow us to engage a theological dialogue with our fallen culture in hopes of redeeming it. Because cinema is for God's sake. Thank you for watching our video essay. It takes a lot of time and research to analyze theology in cinema. We hope that this video will help you approach films with more wisdom and discernment. Please consider liking the video or subscribe for more video content. Again, thank you for all your support and we'll see you next time. to my channel. Today we're going to talk about movies. Coffee. Uh, coffee. And movies. Yeah. I hate movies.